It is that time of year again. It keeps coming around and it keeps coming around. It's the holidays and it is an onslaught of things that are bad for you if you overindulge. So you want to know how do I stay fit? How do I stay in shape to keep running over the holidays? This is a struggle for a lot of people. The time of year when it starts at basically Halloween, which is just before I'm shooting this, um, and by the time it comes out, it'll probably be about Thanksgiving, um, but, it, it, and then it goes on to Christmas and the New Year's and it just keeps going. There's so many opportunities to eat too many sweets and take days off and say, ah, oh, forget about it. How do we stay active? How do we stay fit? How do we stay sane and stick with the plan that we've had to try to become better runners, right? Um, there's a lot of things you can do, but I'm a big fan of keeping it simple um, and then knowing that if you stick to this very simple plan, then you can stay on track with the goals that you have, be it lose weight, get faster, complete a certain race, whatever it is that you want to do, simplicity is key and building systems to keep you on track. The first thing and probably easiest thing, since it's something we already do and it is already a part of our running culture, and that is join a holiday themed run. Whether it's a Halloween run or a gobbler grind for Thanksgiving or a jingle bell run for Christmas, or I'm going to be doing the groundhog run here in Kansas City um, at the end of January. Um, if you want to join me for that, sign up for that one. It's an underground race where it's going to be 68 degrees in the middle of January in Kansas City. Um, so please come out. It's a well attended race. It's a really great venue, uh, super flat, so fast, great to do in the middle of the winter. Uh, but if you join a run, then, hey, you've already got something built in that's going to keep you active. And there are a lot of these races on the days in particular. Now, it may make your day busy, but it's going to build in that activity already. So you know, hey, I've got an obligation. Or, hey, me and my family, we're going to go do this. I don't know your family. I don't know if you can get your family to come with you. I know it would be... <laughs> A tall ask to get all of my family uh, to go do a gobbler grind on Thanksgiving Day. Um, but even if you're doing it by yourself or you're bringing you know, your spouse or a significant other or a sibling or a parent or whoever it is, you have one support person or you're doing it by yourself with no support people. Whatever it is, if you pick out a race, then you know you've got something to aim for. It's something that helps focus us during this time of the year where, hey, maybe it's easy to just say, oh, I'll take the day off, uh, maybe a few days, maybe a week, and then getting back into it is a little bit harder. So that's my first tip for you. Tip two, and this is the big one, is don't overindulge. Now, I didn't say don't indulge because I find it's easy to get into this all or nothing mentality. And we're gonna address all that here in a second as well, but. If you say, I can't have anything, you become so restrictive. And then it can more often than not lead to what is probably more like binge behavior where you have nothing, 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 and then you just go crazy all of a sudden. I think that's, at least in my opinion, why it feels like people just eat so much during the holidays. It's like, they feel like this is their time to let loose and just go wild and then they don't listen to their body. That's why I say don't overindulge. If you wanna have pie, have some freaking pie. Like, it's gonna be okay. One of the suggestions I get from a friend and former coach, Barb Lindquist, who was uh, one of the top pro triathletes in the world uh, during the time she was racing from the late 90s to the early 2000s is if you eat 90% well and 10% unwell, which is like treats, you're fine. It's, it's not going to hamper your you know, running or racing ability at all. Um, and in some ways, I might suggest that it will help you. 
because it's a mental release valve to say, it's okay to have this indulgence. If you've ever seen any of the episodes of my other show here on this channel, the Smart Athlete Podcast, if you haven't, hit subscribe, check, her, check that out. It comes out on Fridays. During the very first season, I asked all my guests, if you could only choose one food as a recovery food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Now, the you know dietitians chose something healthy, as you'd expect from the dietitians, but pretty much everybody else chose an indulgence, be it a beer or my friend Todd who eats cinnamon rolls after every single race. He's had a hundred some odd different kind of cinnamon rolls now. Everybody had beer and pizza and chips and nachos and cinnamon rolls and what is it? It was a mental release valve from all this work. So know that, hey, it's okay to have some of these sweets. But remember, when your body says, I'm full, stop. Wait for later. Have it, you know, for another meal. If, if your family is like my family, there's going to be way too much food. You're going to be eating it for days. So don't think you're going to miss out. It's going to be around. Eat. Be full, enjoy yourself. When you're full, stop, and then have some for the next meal in a few hours. It's not gonna be that long. But speaking to that all or nothing mentality, and I am guilty as charged of this as well. I, I get into this where I just go, well, if it can't be this way, then forget everything. <laughs> it's tough to get out of this mentality sometimes where you just, you want things to be perfect. And if something goes wrong, then just to heck with all of it. I don't necessarily know where the mentality comes from, and I, I work really hard to stay out of it, though I am still subject to it, and you can ask my wife, she'll tell you all about it. Um, but trying to avoid that all or nothing mentality with your running and your, and your schedule is gonna be key here. Because again, if your family's like my family, families get complicated, you probably have multiple engagements to go to over many days, and that makes it even more difficult to stay consistent. So if you say, oh, I'm working out every single day and then oh, I, I couldn't figure out time to do it this day because of this and this and this, so I'll just not do it the next day. And it's an all or nothing mentality. There's a saying I saw first on Reddit. I don't know who to attribute it to, um, but it's the idea that if there's anything worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. What does that mean? It's to try to break you out of that all or nothing mentality. If it's worth doing in the first place, it's worth doing at least a little bit of it. Even if you can't do all of it, if you just do some, i.e. if you're doing it poorly, it's still worth it. If that thing was worthwhile in the first place, doing a little bit of it is still worthwhile. So maybe you're not gonna get that 10 mile run in, but you can get down and do 20 push-ups, or you can go out and get a mile in. Doing it poorly is better than not doing it at all. And being able to adjust to the situation is key, especially during the holidays when things are stressful. Families come in from out of town, or maybe you're going out of town, traveling, meals, planning, timings, all of these things, they get to us. And stress plays a factor in how we recover, how we perform. So knowing that it's okay to adjust and it's okay not to hit every single day, you're gonna be fine. That's gonna help you stay more consistent than if you have this all or nothing mentality where it's, well, if I didn't hit it today, then I'm just gonna forget the whole week and I'll get back to it after the holidays. That's not gonna serve you in your purpose, in your goals, as well as being able to adjust and doing something poorly compared to doing the whole thing you had had planned. So that's my basic system. I know it doesn't seem terribly simple, but it really is. Part of it has to do with listening to your body, so don't overindulge. But also, sweets are nice. Listen to your body. Enjoy them sometimes. Sometimes you need a stress relief. And then again, don't go all or nothing, where if you are, can't get anything in, then you can't do the entire week. Get something in. 
something's better than nothing. Doing it poorly is better than not doing it at all. Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. So, how are your holidays going? Are you having troubles? Feel free to vent down in the comments below. Share your struggles, because we all have them. You're human, I am human. None of us does this perfectly, I guarantee you. And that's what I talk about on the Smart Athlete Podcast. So those people on Friday, from amateurs to pros, Olympians, we all have struggles. We all indulge from time to time. So knowing that you're human, you're not perfect, you're not going to make everything exactly the way you want it, that's the first step on your road to recovery of staying consistent and staying fit over the holidays. So I look forward to seeing your bitching and complaining down in the comments below because we all need to vent sometimes. And hopefully I'll see you next time on the next episode of Runner's High.